playing uh, the mid necrophos. And, and kind of the panel touched upon, something we don't see that much, but uh, Samael raising the stakes there in the mid lane. Giving the good luck to SCCC. SCCC will get it right back there with a thumbs up as well. This, I like it. Oh, this is great. Just dropping the mail as well. I love that. I mean, this is the great thing about the middle. We saw it last game. It was a little unfair. SCCC kind of brought his friends across. <laughs> we got smiles coming out from Faith. Everybody's in, everyone's in good, this is good manners right now. But at the end of the day, this is it's a, such an important game. You know, for evil geniuses, if they end up dropping down to the lower bracket, yep. it's obviously something that we've seen them do a lot in the past. And maybe it's you know saving straps for the lower bracket. But uh, I'm sure they're, they're going to want to bring this one to a game three. Yeah. And uh, the panel, they seemed a lot more comfortable with the lineup that they had in comparison to to EG's lineup in in, in game one. Yeah, I think. It like, like, ben, like Ben in the panel did say, the EG's lineup, if they get to that BKB Enigma point, it's where it's super difficult. There's no way to cancel it. Like this, there is no way for Newbie to really deal with it in that direct way. They can deal with it in other ways of just forcing fights around it and try to take uh, engagements like that, like pickoffs and whatnot. And I think that this, it's going to be important to watch the supports on the side of Newbie because I think what they're going to just be doing is putting as much pressure on the other two lanes so this Bloodseeker can just use his Thirst and Blood Rage to kind of 1v1 versus that Enigma. And we do see mid lane. Kaka actually places a very sneaky ward behind the tower with his smoke movement. So he's looking for a courier. Look at this stuff. Something Ujia playing a up. step ahead. They're taking it around the long way. And I think that this is going to work out. Kaka unlikely to, to come and check around elsewhere. It will be caught under the vision now, but EG were prepared for that there. Maybe on the way back? Unless that depends. Depend yeah, how careful they're going to be here. It looks like they're oh. not going to be careful enough indeed. They were careful on the way out. They weren't careful on the way back. It's Kaka. Grabs the courier. So that's one way to get a, get a good start off for your Queen of Pain and your Bloodseeker. They're already going to have pretty decent matchups, but with that Surge of Gold, it's now a Queen of Pain Shadow Shaman with high base damage versus this Sand King Necro. And the Bloodseeker, like we said, in that 1v1. So putting that, it's pretty much a tri lane main from Newbie to put the pressure onto the Necro post. Because Necro is a hero that it can be very strong in that mid lane, but if you start getting like just pressured down by this Ether Shock and the Shadow Strike starts taking up, a roll hits you, you're going to be at low HP and you can just drop from that. There we go, going in onto Zai there. Zai, that's the Burrow Strike back in return. And the character just trading hits. But yeah, for sure. And we saw as well last game uh, yeah, how Sumail was pretty irrelevant for the last part of it because of the heavy pressure that Newbie put him on at the start. So, yeah. indeed, looking to, to go for a repeat performance in that scene. KP's going to get a lot because of this the laning setup that Newbie does as well. That they have these two supports running around. The Bloodseeker has all the freedom in the world to just farm top versus Enigma because he can just walk in and kill the Eidolons. All they need to do is pretty much get people low, and this Bloodseeker can dominate this top matchup so hard with the Thirst. Even without, even without having people low, he's still doing incredibly oh, well. 15-3. He's gotten all of the Eidolons, I think, so far. His universe has summoned him, and it's still on cooldown 15 seconds, and all of them are dead. So Mugi is crushing that top lane at the moment, to be kind of expected. Yeah, absolutely. And as we've been saying in the mid lane, with the presence of newbie supports, giving that edge, uh, certainly in terms of CS to SCCC as well so far. Being very good with their time usage on newbie. At the same time, Faith is going around collecting bounties, also stacking Ancients to make sure that KP does have that surge, that increase of uh, farm potential after the laning phase. And we'll bring Zai up to this top lane, but the wave's pushing in. Mugi can maintain control underneath the tower. Zai very unlikely to want to come in for any sort of dive at this state of the game with Universe. So, yeah, these lanes, they're, they are looking super hot from Newbie in this first couple of minutes. Yeah, EG's trying to make adjustments already. Yeah. Universe is probably like, he's just walking up and killing my Eidolons. I can't do anything about it. So Zai makes the move on top, but now they're worried about the Bristol. Look Somebody at this mid lane pressure. though. Because of this move up, Tokaka now sees the opening to come in onto Sameo, bringing him down very low. There's Triple C. Does need to be careful in return though. Takes a fair bit of harass in trade there. Does have the salve up, knows that Samael himself is out of regen. So at the end of the day, it doesn't get the kill. That pressure pushes him back. Does Okay, he's got a fresh set of tangos out from the courier. As we saw that pressure, just S triple C using his dominance in this lane. And While he's low though, Universe down. top is just getting chased out because of the third. Yeah, look at this with the blood run. That's going to connect Universe. He's going to be gone. I mean, this top lane couldn't have gone any better for Mugi. He might get a return kill with the Eidolons. It's going to be very close, but no, with the poor man's shield, the damage block is too high. But yeah, just make sure like, Sumail being at that 30%, he has Tango, so it's not that good deal. And now aggression on Sumail again. Kaka, the roll off the mark with the Shadow Strike. Enough to slow him down a bit, but not to pick up a kill. But still, they're keeping him low, and this 
this is where Blood Seeker thrives. Yeah, I mean, maybe this is the thing, you know, Moogie's saying, D don't kill it, leave him alive, just play with him. <laughs> don't kill Samael, keep him alive on this minimal health so he does have that boost up top. It's, I mean, it's working out, it really is. Yep. Moogie feeling very safe on that top lane because of this. Yeah, all three lanes going super well for Newbie. The bottom lane, of course, is going a bit better for EG, but KP getting experience as a Bristleback who's been left alone for the most part is yeah. extremely important. And of course, Enigma, Universe will, of course, will always get stuff up there, being able to not deny the wave back with those Eidolons on the range creep. So and they will get some trade up, but Sumail's yeah, getting punished. I mean, heavily. he had to walk all the way back to base and TP out, so yeah. absolutely not the, the situation you want to have your Necro in. This mid lane is being well and truly controlled, as well as the top lane. As we're seeing as well, that the bottom lane not necessarily going at bad for Newbie at all. He is finding farm down there, but not nearly on the same level as Mugi. But I guess in comparison, you can also say as well, obviously, the, the lead in the last hits is, is just down to the fact that a lot of those are Eidolons. But those give a lot of gold. But they, they do. They yeah, do give a good shot. Sure. And at the same time, it's KP having... He's going to have a quad ancient stack already prepared for himself, and he's almost level 5 on the Bristleback already, which is super significant. This right now, though, he's pretty deep. With nighttime as well, with the double bonus from Hal, they should be able to yeah. clean KP. But the field, I mean, you can hope for some sort of deny for this more. Oh, he gets, gets it! Him. He actually does get the it! The one troll creep! I can't believe he got it! That was... How much damage does that thing do? It's nothing! It's, it's like, like 20... I mean, does, he has a stout shield as well, oh, so Oh my it's, goodness! It does... I think that was the troll creep, so it's 28. <laughs> Through the stout shield as well, so... Alright. Alright. Unfortunate for EG. I mean, I was gonna bring up Ikada, but I didn't think it would happen. Oh. KP. <laughs> the one the one creep that was left. Some say it would be skill, but KP, he had it planned out all along. Wow. I mean, but with that, all three lanes, you know, new B, they are they're very happy with the way this game is starting off. Oh yeah. They have a more than full level advantage on their mid laner over. I mean, yeah, look at the denies from S Triple C. Twenty one denies in this mid lane. Shrine comes up, we'll use that right away. So I just gotta be a bit careful. Nice. It's only level two. There is a haste rune on S Triple C. He has a sonic wave. I mean, if he wants to commit, Zai's certainly gone and well with the wraparound from Kaka. Coming in with the boulder smash, Zai. He'll try and play around with it here with the burrow strike. But S Triple C just throws out the sonic wave, jumps in, cleans up one. I mean, he could look to play around with Samael as well. They are gonna have Kaka moving out of range. Arcane rune bottled up by S Triple C. He won't stick around to, to beat down onto Samael, but it doesn't matter. He is just so far ahead, getting kills like this and such. This is, this is such a one-sided affair, this laning stage, it really does feel it. I mean, top lane Moogie, 50 CS, six minutes in. It's, you know, it's something we did, we did talk about, right before the game did start. It's, they do have very strong lanes, strong pressuring lanes, especially with that Bloodseeker last pick. The fact that they can leave him alone and make those rotations and put the pressure on EG is super important. Punishing that early, early kind of uh, weakness that EG has in their lanes. It's like in, can be strong if he has the proper support duo, but if you take, if you only have it as one support down there, that's where the offlaner is actually able to get stuff. So they force Zai to kind of be moving around all this time, and it just makes KP farm a lot in that offlane. 25 last hits already on offlane Bristleback. Very significant. And the stacks continue. I mean, what's the plan here for EG? We've seen already newbie supports getting, getting very active, at least the, the uh, spirit such in the mid lane, but uh, yet to, to really have the plays coming out from crit and Zai on, on this tanking disruptor combo. I mean, when does something kind of click into place that allows them to enable action in one of these lanes? Their two supports need levels. That's the big thing. So they have to play pretty much, in my opinion, reactively. They have to hope that SCCC kind of like overextends and then they can make have one of the supports set up and the other one TP in. So probably have Zai playing more around the mid lane or maybe play with the black hole since it's online now. And since the okay. black hole is up, they're going to go for Moogie instead with this triple rotation. Moogie seems to know something's up. But... There is an Earth Spirit in the neighborhood as well. He and he's straight ground. out. He is straight out indeed. Can't Over go to in. the bottom lane. And they're actually going to try and do something actively with it as well. This, Ooh, it, this is such a smart move here from Newbie. Will be scanned out though. Scans there from EG. They know that something's going on in the neighborhood. And RTZ will keep himself hidden behind the tree line. I mean, he has to stay there. If he pokes his head out, one rupture and a lead in from Newbie could mean imminent death here. For the Lycan. They get the nice, uh, EG gets the D ward on the lane ward that Newbie did have top because of that rotation from Moogie. They know, they're like, hey, something's up. He knows this gang's coming way too easy. So EG definitely minimalizing their the potential casualty there. They play it safe. Now Newbie have to look elsewhere to try and make this play. 
with Moogie as they move them around the map. Yeah, they're they moving around it. At least they're, you know, they sent Taka top, so it's like, okay, there's some, the wave that does come in, he'll be able to mooch a bit of that experience, but more rotations coming in from EG to try to at least pressure that tower. But at the same time, KP, this is where it opens it up for him. Arteezy unable to farm under the threat of where the Bloodseeker is. They still don't know. Still three heroes up top from EG, seeing if they can get the catch onto Kaka. Now making a move up, both Crit and Zai. Next up could be towards the mid lane, but that, that high ground wall is still there for Newbie Radiant in that area. So very hard for them to get it. And RTZ realizes Radiant that you know, the, Newbie's not leaving this bottom lane anytime soon. So heads up to top, joins the teammates. Can look to try and get the tier one trade in return. And still the potential for a kill is there. Crit in the neighborhood. Trying to see if they can get the glimpse. And now with the lead fort, they have the vision with the Thunderstrike. Kaka. I don't know if he can get himself out of this. He can certainly play with him in the boulder smash. He tries for the roll away, but there's the glimpse. Gets brought back into the clutches of Artor and Universe. And EG do claim the kill and should be able to finish off this tower as well. Tower trades, but good rotation. Picking off that Earth Spirit. Zai now able to get a lot down bottom with that tower being taken out. So he's only level 3 on the Sankey. Compared to last game, he was already level 6 on the Naga Siren. That's so true. pretty significant how underleveled the support's actually on the side of Eden. Moogie's hunting for this. He knows Zai's low on the mana. If he finds a chance for a rupture, he'll go for it. No mercy. Keeps himself right back. If he's almost got the Vanguard finished up on the Bristleback. As soon as he has the Vanguard, that's when the Ancient Stack farming begins. This is an off lane Bristleback who is top 4 of the net worth. That is very threatening. To and, and they can certainly look to, to, to group up and fight with their cores now. S-Triple-C, he's finished off the Veil. 10 minutes in, he's got that ready to go. So huge amounts of magical burst potential there for him. And they should have the Shadow Shaman 6 coming out too, so they'll have that, you know, the actual tower sieging. The heroes don't, don't hit buildings too great other than that. The Bloodseeker and the Bristleback. I guess the Bristle can, but it's mostly those towards. Kaka now moving toward top, waves pushing in, should be able to get level 6 easily on that Earth Spirit. And then they have pretty damn good team fight on the side of Newbie to deal with EG. EG, like we said, they're lacking on levels on their supports. They are also done now for, for some else, despite the, the definite tough time in the mid lane. He's not, I mean, he's still 1k net worth behind the, the quad, but has got that major first item. So as well, can look to start to make things happen. At the same time, Universe, he's picked up the Midas. He's good to go. He's uh, there fourth in the net worth, definitely. And not suffering too much, despite the fact that Moogie had such a good time in that top lane. And uh, Universe, definitely, uh, at least going for the performances we've seen on this main stage in, the, in this series, I, I feel like the most solid performer out of, out of game one. You know, Universe, he kept his cool. That nature's profit, the plays, the split push, Kind of one of the reasons that game went on as long as it did. So yeah. you can definitely w look towards Universe to pull out something special here. EG recognizes this, you know, they know the strength of their lineup. Right, the lanes, sure, lanes didn't go the way that they probably wanted them to, but there still is that threat. Once they get their, their cores online, once that BKB eventually comes out for the Enigma, it's the biggest point. But till then, they have to kind of just play it back, make sure they get their levels, much needed levels on the Sanking and the Disruptor. Once Disruptor has six, they can maybe make some aggressive plays onto this Queen of Pain with the Static Storm and the Super Scythe on top. But till then, they have very little kill fresh and threshold. And now Newbie, they're actually making the first go. Yeah, They've got so the smoke online. Newbie have so much potential here as this four man. They've got Magnetized ready. Zai. It's almost six. He actually yeah, breaks the smoke. He comes in. Zai. And with that, they, they have no idea where Zai actually is at the moment. No wars themselves in EG's jungle. So Zai will get out as well. So it looks like EG with that Sand King movement have avoided the, the potential that Newbie's smoke had there, which was an incredible amount. Immediately, KP splits himself back up towards the top. Massive so coming in bid. If they can get the catch here, which indeed Crit can, brings back Moogie now. The whole team of EG ready the to go. The silence from Kaka. Good smash back from Kaka to hold back the side of EG, but the Malefice was there onto Moogie, allowing them to chase him down. You see that call there, though, from EG? They see the Bristleback porting top. Yeah, it's straight away. Instant. So they'll straight away. Like, we're going on this guy. We need to get the glimpse back and get the kill. So that's a very big kill, killing the highest net worth here on the map. And that's yet to we have yet to see a rupture be able to be deployed by Moogie. EG's doing a very good job of defending each other. Yes. As we were kind of saying. It's as you said. That's the way that they come back into the game. They have to sit behind each other, hope that Newbie kind of overextends a bit, and then they'll get kills and come back through that one. Zai now level six. We said the Static Storm is online, everyone else getting their tools. Once that Blink Enigma comes out, that oh, could be when we see the next smoke come out from the Enigma. Yeah, he's close as well, Universe 1600. 
Maybe. What are they going to find here? Could just be crit, and indeed, silence bursted down immediately. Crit's gone. Tanks the gank. Definitely not the worst loss there for EG. But a kill nonetheless, the newbie. I'm going to keep the pressure on in the mid lane. Big, are they, are they thinking about Roche? With the Shadow Shaman. With Blood Rage. Yeah. Throwing Blood Rage on Roche with the kill. It's actually an immense amount of damage and speed to bring it down. EG seems to know something's up. There's a pink stray on the pit from Zai. They've got Black Hole. There's no blink yet for the Enigma to get into the fight. Can they get it quick enough? They are mass TPing over, but it's falling so fast. They are. Walls have been sent in. EG know the state. Can Zai make the play in time? Roshan falling low. There to jump onto the Shaman on the sideline. It's falling down. They're throwing the to take that one, but they get Roche. Newbie has the Aegis, but the Black Hole! From the universe comes in and the pit mouth of the pit. And EG, they take three. SCCC may get out, get out as, as well as Kaka, but EG, they're happy with that. Cleaning up three, getting moved, you know, the big kill on this Bloodseeker, top of the net were absolutely fantastic there. Yeah, Newbie has to, pretty much, it's go time for them right now. They know all the ultis were used by EG. They got to pretty much go for those uh, next two easy objectives with the up tower in them. And the mid and tower. Three man static storm, nice epicenter coming up from the side, and then the black hole follow up in the universe. Absolutely perfect to bring them all down. If only they were a few seconds earlier, it could have been that little bit greater. But at the same time, you know, we talked about how well EG took that fight. Sweet little things there. Like as soon as the Roshan was going down, Mookie drops the blood right. Make sure that there's no chance for any sort of black hole or, or team fight play to happen during the last seconds of that Roche line. Now it's all about, like we said, playing around those cooldowns. EG does have, they have a good amount of longer cooldowns in comparison to Mugi's. Oh, Mugi only correct. I mean, Mugi's like, are, are, are you alone? He's, he's kind of questioning it. I mean, Crit's going to go to drive the TP out, but Boulder Smash is on point. Another freebie there for Newbie. It's just a Disruptor kill, though. It's not like this is a kill that leads into an objective. They have to make use of this time very well versus these heavy ultimates that EG has. And that's not really the best one. Just it's, it's the five support, they're not getting a tower. And during this time, Black Hole's in 100 seconds, Epicenter is in about 20, and Zai's almost finished up the Blink Dagger now. Oh, he's getting that. He's so close. That's the big team fight that EG will have. Zubi has massive team fight with their Veil Earth Spirit combo, but once Sand King has Blink Dagger, then EG actually has a way to start the fight, which Zubi kind of lacks in a way. They have the Earth Spirit, but it's not that, you know, super reliable instant stun like a Sand King or something like that. So if EG have any plans here, around this tier one in the mid lane at the moment, Newbie getting away with a lot of damage upon it. And it uh, seems to be that EG will opt again as holding this one. I've got the fortification, but KP and S triple C stick around, finish off the tower. RTG gets Oh! <laughs> Very nicely done there by Artor. The patience. He had them there waiting for that whole entire like eight second duration. Uh, he's got his Necro level 2 on the way out, uh, second recipe being flown out right now. So we'll soon have that, that level 3 Necro. We've seen you know, how much damage this can do. I mean, if he just gets that, the, the Necros on the Shaman with the Wolves, he's just gone in a matter of seconds. Yeah. It can, it can absolute wonders that bring no way the backliners. No way for you to deal with it. It's very good versus Bristle back in Queen of Pain 2. The Mana Burn is very, very uh, significant versus Bristle. You know, the, light, the fight goes on longer and longer, the quills become obnoxious, but not if he's completely out of mana because of a Necro book. So it's going to be a really significant item pick up for EG in those team fights. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Moogie, S and Y complete. And, uh, looking straight for the BKB next. Arteezy constantly trying to scout with one of his wolves. He has one kept with him, and the other one is just pretty much securing the areas where he expects them to make movements onto himself. So good, good micro Radiant's coming out from Artur as expected. Attack. 10k player on Lycan. Moogie. Going from objective to objective here. Take the tier one in the middle lane, straight up to the top tower. So that's 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 great for them. You know, the, in the two minute or the three minute that Black Hole is on cooldown, they were able to claim those two objectives and net themselves a kill. But Black Hole is up. Link is online as well for Enigma. It's oh, go time with that side sinking. Indeed, they want to find something big. They know that S Triple C is there in the middle lane. They did spot him out as he cleared the wave, but they want to try and cut off this push that Newbie put together up top. Working on the front lines. Still under the cover of smoke, EG have the ward there, they've got perfect vision, there's the jump on Malapis first, onto Faith, not looking to commit the ult because they don't need the black hole for that one, that's the shaman down, RTZ will transform and they may look to take more, KP control for the moment, by the kinetic field, Universe Team is there's the three jump man. on in. Universe with the three man black hole, it's absolutely perfect, they take down three, they get the 
Aegis as well. Moogie will escape. There's Triple C also potentially in trouble. Universe blinking board getting the vision. Zai comes in with the burrow strike. As Triple C, one more blink. Do they want to chase it? Universe did have Malefus again, but they will let S Triple C be. But beautiful play there from Universe. He just created the right amount of distance. I believe he only just dodged like a boulder smash flying in, and Bam was able to come back in. And newbie, they did not expect him to get away with that. That just big look, vision advantage. Him. That vision advantage yeah. is so important. You see, Kaka's going to come in later, and he tries to get a good boulder smash and silence. He actually misses the silence, and then Universe blinks over the stun and gets the yeah. black. I mean, look at this. Second. Universe kind of comes back, and then he sees Kaka. He's like, "I got to get out of here, boys." Come back in now, blinks over the boulder smash to come back in for that one. That's where we always talk about as like pro players and analysts and stuff, how important vision can be in team fights. Having that ward there for them, EG has all the luxury to kind of be like, okay, this yeah. is who we're gonna pick and choose and go on. Where newbie, they didn't really have any any real vision in that fight to see where the Enigma was located. Very, very nicely done there by Universe now. Say you, you've got to watch this man. Game Enigma one is the crucial one. I mean, Universe, out, out, he is definitely one that you can, he is always going to keep his cool on the main stage. This is, you know, Universe very unfazed by any sort of pressure that he's put under. And, you know, it's, you can see it. He's, it's unique. He's keeping it cool. It's unique. We know him. BKB next on the menu for this Enigma bottom lane. Hunting for Zai. Zai will be safe, though. Not quite going to catch him there with a roll forward from the Kaka. Nice triple C. Relatively close now to having that Orchid complete, so... But at, at this rate, it is going to be a similar time to, to when that BKB is online on, on Universe. So. EG's probably feeling pretty comfortable now with the, the way that the game is starting to develop after that Roche engagement. The big thing is getting that blink BKB on the Enigma, like we're always talking about. There's no way for Newbie to cancel it. They have to play around it really well. So we have BKB going to be built next for Moogie on top of that S and Y. Faith is trying to go for a Blink Dagger because they only really have the Earth Spirit for catch at the moment on Newbie. So if he wants to have that extra, uh, that extra catch with the, take the team fights better. Because they can't just rely solely on Kaka to do everything. Be all the lockdown and catch on their team. A bit of downtime now between the sides. They look towards these these crucial item moments. And 20 minutes in, 8 to 5. This downtime's great for EG. Black Hole is just oh, getting off the of cooldown during all this. Crit. It's unseen. Yeah, it's good to see a fan and crit again. The life of the support. Constantly trying to, to get the, this deep vision out. But pretty much every time, Newbie's been able to make him pay for it. He got the ward down. He finished his turn before dying. Sure. This is this is just the job as a 5 support. You die for your team. You die for the cause. It's better than one of your cores dying. And now Black Hole is back online for DJ, so they can try to make some plays. And BKB is about not quite the gold. Okay, so there's a bit, there is a bit of a window now where S Triple C does have the Orchid and uh, no BKB. So depends if they see that on the Quap or if indeed they do try and make something happen before it. But I wouldn't be surprised if DJ, uh, they can just say, pretend waiting, yeah. get that BKB at least on an Enigma, then look to make an Enigma. Darkness middle tower is under attack. Marquise continues to keep those wolves scouting out all the places. Get so much information on the map. They do actually want to go. They want to try and fight. So Universe still vulnerable, but we saw how much he did before without having to rely on the BKB. Okay, Jump easy in. Pick. And they'll look to just go immediately onto Faith. The man offers the Midnight Pulse down. They'll put the Reaper's side. Make sure that Charmin's down for 50 seconds. They can get an invasion play here too. Arteezy's right position top for the push, so easy tier 2 can be clean, but Kanka is in position. Newbie may want to actually fight for the this. Shadow Shaman's dead for 40 seconds. Kaka with that yields as well. And another way to play around this non BKB Enigma at the moment. Bristleback is very farmed right now. Hood and Solar Crest are very durable versus what EG has to throw off. Universe has to just sit all the way in the back. There's a deep war though from Nubi, so they see everything for this engagement if they want to take it. But a trade is the choice coming up. And in fact, and the Universe, he says, I can smell someone in these trees, clears out the tree line with the Midnight Pulse. An absolute jackpot. He hits it. Finds nice Kaka. And Crit's trying to set up for a glimpse play bottom. But Moogie hides in the trees. Almost get the glimpse Ooh, off. That was close Eddie. there. And nearly got the vision with that field. Still indeed taking a tier 2. Keeping control of their own. EG now finding the favorable trades across the map. Slowly pulling ahead. This is the first time actually that EG has been in that work this game. 23 minutes in. 
Still very, very early days here for both sides. Diffusal, the next item for Arteezy, and he's very close to having it as well. Talk about being close, Universe, pretty much with that BKB done now. You get that recipe sent out. And then these fights become a lot harder, because what, what do you do at this stage about a BKB and Nickling? You, th there's actually nothing, is there, on Yubi? They have to try to split the fights and yeah. take them on from different angles. Catch EG pretty much off guard. Arteezy does get silenced up by the blood, right? Put some mail there with the heals. EG are here, ready to turn if newbie come in too hard. You've got both Zai and Universe in the tree line behind the side of EG, keeping themselves hidden. And newbie, I think they're aware. They hang around the tier one and they, they don't bite they the bait the, too hard. They, they hold back. They see the courier just went through both their wards with the actual PCB recipe on it, so they now know that Universe does have that one and may dissuade them from trying to take a head on head fight. So let's think we're going to be building toward a uh, Radiant Snakes that he switches it up from the BKB that he had in quick buy. Yeah, the Radiance, I mean, uh, it's going to be nice for a numerous amount of reasons, really, isn't it? Something that yeah. they can hurt a little bit through the Ghost Shroud, something that, that just an extra thing that this, you know, these two heroes, the, the, the Enigma and the Sand King, are looking to blink in, they have to now be aware of. Just extra damage, way, easier ways for him to push out the waves, and he's probably thinking, like, BKB wouldn't really solve the issue that could happen in the fights when he's just going to sure. get Black Hold. And always the missed chance. You've got two cores that, that aren't going to be building MKB uh, anytime soon. Maybe Arteezy down the line, but still has that Diffusal Blade queued up. Yet to invest, so we could see him change his mind at any time. S Triple C as well, just working to, towards the safe part of his build. BKB next on the menu for the Queen of Pain. EG. Playing around their vision, making the smoke rotations. Every single one of their smokes has been to one of their observer wards that they placed aggressively in the enemy jungle. And I think S Triple C realizes, he said, look guys, the mid lane, the top lane, it's starting to push in. No one's cleaning it out. Everyone's off the map. And th this is obviously the weakness when, yeah. when you go for these five-man smoke plays. He draws a circle yeah. actually on top of all of EG. He knew, knew exactly where their movement was coming. I mean, at this state, what? What's the, what's the plan here? Roshan is back up. Yeah, that's the before... secondary one. This is where probably the big next fight's gonna happen. Sure. The Aegis and Cheese. It's hard for Newbie. They have to find some type of pickoff. If they, if they can get, if they can do some type of way to get Vision into the back lines and find that Enigma, that's their biggest case scenario. Other than that, it's very hard for them to take team fights. Kaka, buying up potential onto Samael. Let's just see. We'll blink away. They're trying and search in the tree lines here. There's the force forward to cut it in, and they know he's there. They've got the vision on him. He'll jump back, but there, with the Midnight Pulse and the Malefice, Universe has the control. And Kaka, can he do anything to escape out? Have the roll up again in five seconds. Does have the Yule Scepter, but he's just going to accept his fate and get beaten down upon by EG. They're just trying to split up as much as possible on the side of Newbie. Radiance is now finished on the Bloodseeker, but fighting into this Blink, the Blink BKB, they, they don't want to do it. And now out of this, EG pick up a nice DD rune for Arteezy, walk into the pit. Easy Aegis and Shane's coming out for them. Absolutely, we'll be nowhere near the area. No chance of contesting it at this state with the items and, as you said, that DD just being an extra bit of a bonus there for Arteezy. We'll grab the Aegis, Cheese goes the way of Samael. Looking tough. For newbie, just the, what's the solution? The solution versus the Enigma BKB is you gotta play around it somehow, but they're unable to really get any big opportunities around it because newbie EG has been sticking mostly together, not really giving newbie any chance to get pickoffs. BKB gonna be coming out for S Triple C soon, so at least he'll have that for the Static Storm and for the Reaper Scythe, but it's still the problem. They've nearly got the blink on faith, so yeah, that sort of catch, of course, All right, so they've could got... be crucial. If they, as you say, if they can get that jump on onto Universe and keep him out. They just don't have a way this time around for Nubi to get, get vision. There's no vision yeah, here, yeah, where EG has the wolves, which have been constantly scouting out, and also they've had a bit of vision advantage in the game just since warding. Those deep aggressive wards in Nubi's jungle have been really hurting. We saw in the, that one big fight that Universe got the black hole. That's exactly what happens because they had vision there. Stunning sound put the pressure here in the middle lane. Samael. Force and Lotus complete. I mean, he's feeling very safe for the moment. Oh, yeah. The Lotus Orb is super good versus both the Blood Rite and versus the Queen of Pain Orchid, but also just in case. I mean, if he gets that Lotus Orb and it gets, if the Rupture comes out, Blood is going to Rupture can't do anything in the fight. Has to be perfectly timed though before the rupture comes out.
I'm Basher, going to be the build here from KP after the, the Solar Crest and Hood. Ah, that could be one way to stop the Black Hole. That's right? one way to go for the... If get an can abyssal get that right angle. and right, get in the right angle. Nice. That's very hard to do, sir. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much impossible. Now EG, ready to push down mid. They've got an Arcane Rune on Universe. And obviously with the Aegis and Chi still in hand, they really want to try and make something happen here. EG. Universe is scarily approaching it. Do you look at the glimpse Locked back onto Kaka? But still, it's a little too deep for EG to commit fully onto the Earth Spirit, but they're maintaining hold of Newbie deep behind the tier two. So this tower is going to be very hard for them to defend. And indeed, they will not. EG, take the tier two tower. Crit, thinking about whether there's potential to go in for, for a play here. And in fact, well, it's easy. He just pops the ultimate and, uh, and gets out of it. Continues the farm going? Wants I mean, to go maybe farm faster. I guess, and maybe feels that they're they're just not going to take a team fight anytime soon with the way that you'd yeah. be dodging it. He wanted to cut the creep wave top as well with his book and his okay. necro or with his wolf. He sees S triple C pushing top. He wants to farm ancients and cut the wave and farm as much as he can with that. Since yeah, there's not an engagement happening for a while. From the way that newbies playing, EG definitely has that kind of read. They're all just kind of farming. They're in a position where they don't really know what they want to do, how they want to take the fights because the blink BKB enigma is just so damn threatening. And especially now, you know, Aegis and Cheese doesn't, doesn't help either. Good for me. I mean, Universe as well, with the, the amount of space he's being given. Very, very close to having a full out Octarine. Almost Octarine as well. with the level 18 on top, and he's already got the cooldown reduction talent yeah. on top. So when he's got level 18, it's, it gets down to that, like, what, 98 okay. second, I believe it is, or something. Very close to that duration, or 102 seconds. I mean, it really goes to show again how, how sort of passive this game has started to, to fall into this period. If you look at all six cores, they're pretty much at the same pace. This is just, you know, <laughs> six top tier, the best in the world players, just having all the space that they, they want and, and just hitting creeps. And no one's messing up. Everyone's keeping at the same, the same stage at, at this point of the game. EG overall, slight lead. I would assume that EG probably feels a bit happy with the pace of the game. Because, but because of their heroes? Perfect for them. Yeah, because they have, a, yeah. I mean, they have the BKB Enigma. If you get to the point where you have the pressure too on top, it's almost impossible for them to really take fights. And now, with the Aegis still online, with Assault finished up for RTZ, they can try to take an engagement. Let's see what they can get here. Newbie still just, yeah, they know. They just hide inside their base, have one or two heroes split pushing. They have no intention of taking fights first. As soon as those five heroes are off the map, newbie, seemingly playing away. So this S Triple C is still down bottom. They may, they might lose Kaka here. If he gets spotted out by Zai, it's a possibility. I see they do scan. They do the scan connects on S Triple C in here with a midnight pulse. Oh, They're gonna catch him. There we go straight away with a black hole. No messing around. Portal smash will connect, but it's too late. The Queen of Pain's down, and Kaka with that play may have just paid with his own life. Will yours up the SK to try and get around it, but you can't yours underneath the tornado. He's stuck in the kinetic field. EG, they're gonna get both of them out of this push. They even bring in some ale to, to add a bit of extra pain there to the death of the Earth Spirit. Down for 70 seconds. That map awareness. These scans, you know, they, they can read it. They know that someone's hiding there. And who better to find than S Triple C on the Queen of Pain? Massive catch. Yeah, super worth it for EG to take engagements with one man black holes like that. They don't, they know that there's no way Newbie wants to fight them. Huh? Spending it on just the main core hero is more than worth it. And now it's going to be Octarine finished up for Enigma. And they can start their tower siege on that tier 2 bottom. Which, that's all the that's all the outer towers. Yeah, they've got a Soak Caress finished on Artsy. Everything's ready to go for this. As you say, just no black hole, but with the position that they're in, definitely capable of taking a fight without that. It's not going to take too long to come attack. back up either. 90 seconds for this one, but the next one is... 90 seconds sure. after, but now the next one's going to be much faster with that Octane finished up. And 90 it's seconds game. in a game that's going at this sort of pace, it's it's not that much, as yeah. you say. It's, it, it, but the chance that anything crazy happens in favor of Nubian, 90 seconds. They know the black hole's down. Possible. This is their time to try so to make something happen. But do they leave happen. the base? It's, it's still risky. It looks like... I mean, do they go out or do they just wait? I think they have to try to make plays around the black hole timing. Yeah. Like every single time it's down like that. It's, it's going to get to a point where it's always going to be up but they're struggling to get their waves out. The top wave and mid lane are out, but bottom now, they're gonna have to show heroes. A newbie, understandably, very, very careful in this position. I mean, KP has the Abyssal. Artesia himself, 
nearly BKB on top of the Assault Caress, and obviously with the, those two items, he's going to be feeling pretty invincible in these fights. Yeah. It's like the, the farm, when we look at it, like you said, though, you look at the top six, and it looks it looks like newbie can... You know, they, they, they're in a way to be able to contest, but it's just the threat of the black hole. Yeah. It's just how much it really can. It's not even the threat, it's, it is the black hole, because he has the BKB in the blink. And here we go, smoke, 20 seconds till it's up. They draw the line. They see the blood seek near bottom now, too, so they know that he's not going to be in the fight right away. This should be a successful move for MeG. Newbie, are they ready for this Kaka on the front of it all? He's going to be the one to tank it. Jump four straight away. They're looking for more. EG, they're not content with just one. They get the vision. Drag back KP. Held in the Midnight Pulse, but the next ring is out as well. EG just ripping through this Bristleback, and KP's gone as well. Evil geniuses. Oh, boy. It's looking impossible for Newbie to do anything. This is, they don't even have to use Black Hole. That time, it is just the threat of the Black Hole. Newbie has to completely disperse and unable to take those, take any fights with the GG. And of course, this push that EG are gonna have, Assault Karras, the Necro units out, the sustain that Samael can offer, it, it's gonna be terrifying. They drop the Serpent Wards in an effort to push EG back, and it looks like that, that will actually do the job for now, as EG back away, and aren't gonna look to push in any further. But as you say, you know, EG very, very comfortable with the position they're in. They can wait out these bigger items. Now they do have that BKB on RTZ. Feeling that they're under no pressure whatsoever. They've got a 7k gold lead. Not necessarily the biggest. But they know. They take one fight with, or as we saw, without that black hole. Get the push on. With the Necro books out, it's very hard for Nubi to put his top to. And unless they have something like the Serpent Boards and the rest of their ultimates available. Radiant are scanning gold. I think Newbie might, might start trying to do some things that are desperate because it's just looking to get worse and worse as the game progresses versus EG. I mean, it really feels like you know, we, we saw Moogie absolutely have a, a, an incredible time in that top lane, but at this stage, it feels like the Bloodseeker is, is just struggling to offer anything. They, 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 I mean, it feels like Newbie even realized it themselves as they're, they're not even actively trying to fight with or around the Bloodseeker. They're just sort of letting Moogie farm and, and just hope, hope, hoping for the best by the looks of it. Yeah, that's it's the BKB that we were talking about. It's it's just too much. They can't deal with it. They have no way to counter it. But now they're trying to bait us triple C mid. Maybe this is the play that yeah. the BKB comes out and now the potential turnaround universe will commit the black hole. But he didn't pop the BKB. The BKB? He gets silence. Now the turnaround. They will take down some out. Can they get it anymore? RTZ pop the BKB. He starts to chase towards Kaka. They found Faith. Kaka's gonna be able to roll away safely. It's a one for one at the moment. Newbie with the edge and they've taken down some ale. Now Zai jumps in looking for Moogie. Moogie will get taken down. Now it's EG getting the lead. S triple C trying to finish your crit, earn a shadow's heal, not enough to keep the disruptor alive. RTZ's lost the ultimate form, s triple jumping back in, Kaka's there, looking for the setup, Yule's up onto Zai, they've got the control, Boulder Smash connects onto both, s triple C trying to finish him off, but Zai up to the high ground, do they have the vision? They don't have any sentries down at that point, so Zai will be able to continue to run. KP though, chasing down RTZ, four stack, can Universe save him? He can't, nothing he can do to keep KP off RTZ. And a beautiful fight there. I mean, as you said, it was absolutely the bait there from Newbie, encouraging them, EG, to go in on that kill. We saw, you know, the, the confidence that EG had just blowing that black hole on one target. Universe not even preemptively popping his BKB before committing. And then it just fell apart. Don't think they expected everyone else to be there just because the way Universe black hole it. You usually wouldn't see him make that kind of mistake. He must have thought, hey, there's, it's just a point queen of pain here. No one else is in the area. I don't want to waste my BKB but definitely paying for that one, again. paying for that choice. I mean, straight away going in, and immediately, you know, once that BKB's not out, blood right, the, the pull from the uh, spirit, it's all gonna be there. And, you know, being able to clean up the squishy back line as they do get the one support, Kaka too elusive. And with fights like that, Newbie starting to, to close the gap back up. EG do still have the lead. That's the Newbie, they're into the pit. The dream scenario. They're gonna get it. They get that fight happening. Universe doesn't click the BKB, of course, but they get the win in the fight and the Verosh response right afterwards. So H is cheese going in their favor. Very, they could not have asked for something like that. Absolutely. Very well played sequence of events there from Newbie, but definitely was had the potential for that to roll out because of EG overstepping the market and getting a little too confident with the position they were in. Yeah. They, they don't really have like the craziest amount of damage in the black hole if there's someone who's BKB if Arkeezy's not in position. So that fight, Arkeezy was far on the left side when the black hole came out. Of course, it got cancelled instantly, but. He also got Abyssal, too, so they need to make sure if they do use the Black Hole on targets that are BKB, they need to have Arteezy in range to be able to do those. But, you know, of course, it's 
If the also the black hole last hole. Oh, I love this. I didn't know if he was going to do this, but he the has blink gone for the blink He's abyssal. Go for it. He is literally just playing this game to get behind and on top of universe. It was a, yeah, something we considered that could be an option. He could try yeah. to get into it. Sometimes it's still impossible. If you place the black hole like right on top of your oh, thumb, so, or just yeah. a little bit ahead of yourself, you actually can't get behind them to use that abyssal blade. But it's still not even a bad item pickup to be able to get into those back lines. If he's able to like blink into the back and abyssal blade onto like the disruptor or something during some of those follow-ups, it can work really great for their follow-up. BKB done. Bloodseeker, but you've got to watch it as well for the, the durations of like universes. What's this down to now? He's only used a couple to put the bomb, so it's just down to the nine. But once that starts to get low, there are hardly more and more openings for leaving right around that threat. They just, yeah, that's a big, I mean, it's a huge swing. It's almost 7,000 gold swings so because of getting that Aegis and Cheese in that big fight. So now it puts EG in a little bit of a fearful position to play into it because. You don't want to play with your black hole into multiple lives, and this is where Nubi's going to try to take advantage of it, because if the black hole does come off with the BKB, they don't have to cancel it now. They can wait for people to respawn and do that. Crit, trying to walk up. He's going to take the game. He's going to get Will get the Glimmer Cape off and jumps back as Holder Smash comes through there. He's trying to turn around the universe, coming in, but no! He gets it up, but he's only onto one. Will kill the Shadow Shaman, but overall, uh, EG then falling apart. So Mail's gone. Universe just has to TP out of there. RTZ trying to man up against that Triple C, but he blinks away. Newbie just chasing down. Glimmer Cape is on him again. Crit will save him, but Crit pays with his life. And again, Newbie. This is huge for Newbie now. They can actually go high ground. Yeah, no black hole now. The only threat is epicenter. No buybacks either on the two that are down. Will pop the Aegis there on the side side, trying to slow them down with the Burrow Strike. But I don't think Newbie will have any plans of backing up. They're going to stand their ground, pushing onto the tier threes here. This could be now. Death. They get jump in with the abyssal. The boulder smash comes through onto two. Newbie, they're doing it here. They're found the nearly RPG as well. No, the cheese comes out. RTZ will survive. Buyback forced out though from Zai. Newbie still clean up the melee racks in the middle lane. And Newbie. They played this game very patiently, and ever since that bit of a blunder from EG in the middle lane, Newbie getting the momentum back behind them now with the 2k gold lead themselves, and they're not done. They're moving down to the bottom lane. They Black really want to abuse this time. How long to Black Ops? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. They got Shadow Shaman oh, one too. This, this is, is going to be a test. second set of racks for Newbie here. No holding back. They are not leaving this base. Universe. 17 seconds to the black hole. Can they kill them all this right? They can't. The melee racks are gone. They make the jump in onto KP. Can they actually get this kill? The Midnight Pulse is down. They do have the Reaper side. They'll bring down the Bristle. But two melee racks gone. Newbie, they've done their work. They're going to be all smiles at the moment, and evil geniuses are going to feel incredibly shaken up. Incredibly impre impressive there, the way that they played around it. Universe unable to get the perfect black hole there. Uni Newbie just punishes it so heavily. They, it just shows, though, too, how much EG does rely on getting those black holes. So if they can put Universe in a, in like a frantic position to be forced to use that, this is where they could shine. And then it comes in, and it, 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 even though despite how close Kakra is only getting fake, it was exactly what you said as well. He does it on put top, it on top of, of himself. To I make think sure he saw that the abyssal. No yeah, yeah, he's making sure that it doesn't get cancelled off. But it just it meant that it wasn't good enough. And newbie. Yeah, look at that. Estra, he loves it. <laughs> a little bit of he a victory absolutely dance. absolutely loves it. That's got to feel good. It, it absolutely has. In a game as well, 42 minutes again, only 19 to 12. But as we saw, you know, ever since sort of the 10 minute mark, EG the ones to to put their foot down. But bam, now Newbie taking down two melee racks in a fantastic position. I mean, EG, of course, they still have this incredible push. They take one fight, they get one big black hole. They can do the same that, that Newbie achieved to them. They can yeah. clean up two racks in a, in a matter of a minute. But they need to find that fight, and at the moment, Newbie are not letting them get it. EG wants to be the ones making the jump happen now. The last two times, it's been Newbie kind of like baiting slash positioning EG into responding. Now EG wants to be the ones to be dictating it rather than that responsible, because that's where mistakes happen. Yeah. When you're forced to just react to people, you're, you're just like in that frantic instinct kind of thing, and you jump, and that's where the mistakes happen. And Arteezy as well with his build, I think I think he realizes, you know, they, they've got to just rely on getting one fight pushing. He's looking to pick up the Desolator. Yeah. Just everything that they can get together to make sure that that one fight they win, that's when they close the game up. 
he's all their physical damage too. Everyone else is magical on the side of EG, so he knows his job. He knows what he needs to be doing in this game. You can see, of course, in that last fight, you know, RTZ is, is still incredibly scary for Nubi. They have to keep their distance. But uh, once his sort of backlines fall down around him, he doesn't have the control to, to hold someone like SCCC in place. We, we saw, you know, last fight, the Queen of Pain being one hit away from being taken down, but the blink... Nubi's got their lanes in good position. And there's the jump, jump, look for the free pick up to start things off. Crit, can he get out? He cannot. Or maybe he can. Wait with the Glimmer get No, SCCC waiting on the high ground. He'll bring him down. 50 seconds, Crit does have buyback available. And EG, of course, will be doing everything to make sure they're not mega creeped. They do have that top lane fairly pushed out. Tier That's 2 still standing. s c already. He's like, yeah, you, you need to force the top lane, actually. It's really important for them to, to do that. 30 seconds till crit respawns. We have... Universe is about... He's close. He's like 1,300 gold away from the refresher, so they will have that double, the threat of the double black hole, but still about landing it. And if newbie, if newbie still, I think that's the best way for them to take these fights is to run in and force Ichi's hand. Rather than Ichi just taking the pick when they want to and playing around their vision. Right now, it's very limited, actually, for EG. It's pretty much just those wolves walking around and that one board that they did place just before during that push. So with those two side lanes always pushing in, and Nubi always has a lot of information on the map and allows himself to accrue a bigger and bigger advantage during this downtime. Um, you can see EG with the smoke. They were hoping that Nubi would come in on, for that tier 2 push, but... The newbie, they're, they're smarter than that. They're, they're not going to just throw themselves in. I mean, now they've come forward. So Mail has revealed. They keep KP on the front lines. S Triple C is a big threat now, too. Six slotted. Well, we can still replace the Veil, but with the Mjolnir finished up and the level 25, 60% life steal talent, that can be another factor I mean, he, they have yeah, to add in. I bet he's massive. He really is. 24,000 net worth, 45 minutes in. And I, I said at the start, I was excited to see it. This is something we've seen in the past. S Triple C. Definitely one of his flashiest and finest heroes, the Queen of Pain, and this game looking to be no exception. This is the perfect time for a newbie to start pressuring like this. It's the double ta double catapult wave, the first one of the game that come starts coming out. You see the two side lanes being heavily forced in, and top lane will meet there with the double catapult as well. We'll start to set up that siege. What do EG do? They are holding close to them dearly this tier 2 tower. A newbie being so safe with the way that they, they slowly seize the top lane. Sdrpc is not even with his team right now, he's farming jungle. <laughs> he's trying to get as much as he can during that downtime. Should be able to claim the tier 2 here. Maybe they don't expect EG to commit super hard on the defense, but EG is. And now Sdrpc starts to make his movement back over. The wards do get farmed up very quickly there by EG. The side lanes though, that's the issue. The catapults start hitting on the shrines in the mid lane, so shrine is almost actually brought down. At about 150 life, and the bottom wave. Oh, they've actually found the man. They jump in, they find him in the trees. They have the shackle on to Zai. RCG pops the BKB. Now make the leap on the paper. F triple C comes on the back line. Universe will hold him in place with the BKB black hole. Have they got the damage to shot? Yes, they have. Zai comes in with the AP. Hey, Evil Genius, they found two. And they get KP as well. Samael has to keep his distance. They've lost RTZ. RTZ does not have buyback. Moogie manning up with the BKB. Looks towards Zai. Will get the kill. Gets the heal. Keeps himself alive. KP moving in on Samael. Reaper side, not enough to bring down the bristle. The mana oh my God. the tower hits. Is it enough? KP will finally go down. Universe does it there with the midnight pulse. EG have lost three, but at the same time bringing down three members of newbie themselves. But EG's base, it's getting They've destroyed got by back. these creeps and catapults. I mean, as we can see, their gold does slightly favor EG. You know, it's it, because of the fact that they were behind. Being able to kill SCCC on the Queen of Pain is amazing. But Moogie, he escapes alive. RTZ loses his life again, and as you say, the pressure still certainly on for EG. So, whereas they may have been able to slow down Newbie's advance onto the base, unlikely that any, anything's going to happen whilst these Newbie heroes are down because of their own casualties. The big thing for EG there now is that Universe will have a pressure for the next upcoming engagements. I mean, look at this here. We're going to be able to get a shot at Universe's perspective. Comes in, looks to the side, realizes, bam, he can commit onto this Queen of Pain. He's still always, you see how he's using the black hole every time he places it right on right top on of himself, top. just to make sure that that Bristleback can't blink and get the Abyssal Blade off. Very important to note those things. Still, as we say, newbie still with the lead. Roche is back. Third Roche, another Agent Cheese. 
since we are past that 40 minute mark for quite a bit now, we do have the double runes that will be playing into favor. And oh look, a DD right outside the pit. No big timing here. Um, newbie, they are going to have everyone back up. Same to be said for Evil Geniuses, but Newbie already closer to the pit. And EG having to deal with these lanes, being pushed in by the Super Troops. There's very little chance that EG can contest this Roshan, and this should be a free Aegis and a cheese into the pockets of Newbie. They'll make a scan, EG starting to move a couple over, but it's not going to be anywhere. The cheese is got the ground. Out. Oh, they actually pick it up. RTZ almost got it. It looked like he it. was going to be able to deny it. Yeah. SCCC actually picked it up. It looked like he was leaving it for somebody else, but after they didn't grab it right away, he's like, no. Now he passes it over to Moogie. They need one more of those those black hole holds. And, and, and this is the thing, as we've seen, Universe, he needs to catch the course. Yeah. And, he, and when he does it, 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 because of the placement that he has to go for, it's it's so hard for him to get anything more than just that. But taking down one core can certainly put a hold to, to the push that Newbie try and bring on. And it's thankful this time that they have the refresher yeah. versus the Aegis and Chiefs. So now they at least have those two black holes versus the multiple lives that Newbie will have. Looks like they're trying to take an unexpected fight at this tier 2 with the way Universe is positioned. But now they've shown, shown all their faces. So now Zai actually also has a Lincoln Spear picked up. So now if Zai throws a Lincoln on Universe, they actually Oh, up. they're opening up it. Black Hole will be committed onto KP. They're trying to burst down the Bristle on the sideline. He gets the cheese off, though. It's a two-man rush coming in. He's the cheese. Comes down on the side of a Universe. With a refreshing Black Hole, he's caught to. Has the corner triple C, but will bring down Moogie. But the Evil Genius is then lost too. Buyback immediately on both Tameo and Universe. They'll try and re-enter the fight. Tameo falling down low. Burrow's trying to come down the side. They will find KP a second time. Silence is now on to the Queen of Pain. The Midnight Pulse bringing it. Triple C down low, he'll lose the ages. He's gone. Buyback from Crit. The Idolons are out. Can they get back in on this? Mass buyback from Newbie. They want to finish this game off. And Triple C jumps forward. Will have the Shadow Strike reflected back to him. This is their time to end they it. Know they know that they have even Bristle buyback. Look, yeah, they know there's no black holes. They Every are going single ulti. Can Every he ulti really is hold? 60 seconds until the black hole's back. 60 seconds before Arteezy's back in the game. This is the double catapult wave as well that's going to be coming in for the 50 minute mark. As I uh, just doing everything he has to slow them down. Jumps in with a bow to try to midnight pulse. Uh, bringing Moogie down low, but the water there. Faith gets the shackles, but the force back keeps him alive. Bow is turning around with the boulder pull. Does silence the Sand King. Faith goes scepters, drawing their attention towards the side side with the sandstorm. And the Malefice is enough to bring down Faith. They brought down the Shaman. Can he the Triple C jumps in. BKB pop. Turning towards Universe, Universe keeping himself alive with the Midnight Port and the Ultra Core Heal. S Triple C blinks away. RTZ is back in the game. Has back the back of S Triple C comes back. Crit brings it back in. RTZ takes him down. S Triple C's gone. But he did not buy back for that affair. He was already alive. So he is not on the dieback. And that cost four buybacks from Evil Geniuses. An incredibly costly hold. But a hold that they did have to fully commit to. And it did work. They keep those racks alive. And now we're at the point where those ultimates are going to come back into play. Black Hole is there for Universe. 20 seconds and he's got the refresher as well. Nobody's in a threat now. If they could, you know, if they lose a couple heroes, they can just lose the game. They expended majority of their buybacks too. You, like you said, the Queen of Pain did not, but the Bloodseeker, I believe, what? We had Bloodseeker buyback, Bristleback buyback, and the Shadow Shaman buyback. When you kill the Bloodseeker, you knock him down for two minutes. EG. They're looking at they're looking to force it. Can they really turn this? They're sitting at a 10k gold loss. They are down two racks and that top three, you know, the top four racks, they are now exposed. You see this top fight again and just able to get the cheese off on KP here was super crucial in the fight. Secondary black hole. Excellent, but S Triple C just demolishing universe in, during that, but all the buybacks forced out. Now here we go. EG, then knocking on the doorstep of newbie, pushing down the middle lane. Nice bit of goal there for Moogie as he cleans up the Eidolons with the blood right. But EG, you know, they have to commit pretty hard for this. There is definitely an opportunity to take this game if they can bring down Moogie. Level 25, Blood Seeker. Whole universe plus the BKB, preemptively tries to get the jump, he's found the black hole. It is onto KP, so they actually have the damage to finish him off. So I comes in with the epicenter. He's found. done it. Oh, he saved he's it. Oh my man. God. He keeps KP alive. Beautiful play from Kaka. He managed to save him there. The second of Black Hole, the universe is down. They've lost two. Sonic Wave flies through from S Triple C. Triple kill for Moogie. EG are all dead. And G Kaka, are you gone. kidding me? Kaka! What a play there. The Aghanim Zerspear, I believe he only just picked it up. Oh. Keeping KP alive. My god, that was absolutely beautiful. Wow. I'm
And with that, that's CG down, not down wow. to the lower bracket. Newbie with an incredibly deserved victory. 2-0. We, we talked about the Blink BKB in English so much, but that was just damn impressive how Newbie played around it. Small mistakes from EG costing them heavily, but Newbie recognized what they wanted to do in this game. They had to change the pace and make sure they were the ones causing the fights to happen, and that's what they did. Absolutely. Wow. wow. I mean, Newbie, <laughs> that's... What, what a...